Hey, uh, last week uh, we started a series on honor. How many of you weren't here last week? Okay, please go back to the podcast and watch it. You got to catch up because we are developing a culture of honor here at Grace Church. And we talked about what honor is last week. And uh, I want to start off, first of all, reading this text. Ryan put it up this week on Facebook, so he had a head start on me. Romans 12.10. Let love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Would you say that last line with me? Outdo one another in showing honor. That's what we want this church to be, amen? I need everyone to say amen. Amen. Yes. I want to start off this morning saying something about Roger Stark. I am not a marriage counselor. I am not a family counselor. I'm a biblical exchange life counselor. So if you want to come and feel good in marriage or family counseling, don't come to me. Because I will not make you feel good. I will speak truth, and truth brings forth conviction of righteousness and sin. So I want to be right up front and honest with you. Because what I share today is offensive. Why? Because it's the cross. The cross is offensive. But God's called us all to the cross. And so last week, we talked about honor. And honor starts off with, what's H stands for? Yes, humility. You cannot have honor unless you have humility. O, what does O stand for? Obedience. Praise God, you were listening. Jesus was not only obedient, he was obedient unto the cross, the death. Total obedience. Then N, what did N stand for? Name, which is character. Your character follows you. Character is important in honor. I love watching military And we'll talk about military uh, next week, and uh, along with our government. We'll talk about honor in them. But I love seeing military, when they confront each other, they honor each other. They salute each other. The higher ranking, they salute. There's just a place of honor in our military. So they have character. What's the next O stand for? Overcoming. It got a little weak on that one, but today we're going to turn that O into other-minded you're going to be other-minded and then R stood for respect and reverence reverence respecting one another reverencing one another so the world's way of honor is this I will honor you if you honor me that's the world's way but let me just say the world has infiltrated the church. That's not God's way. God's way is, I honor you, period. Why? Because I am one with honor, and I am honorable. And so even when you don't honor me, I will honor honor you. Why? Because that's who I am. That is my identity. I'm calling us up to a place where we forget about ourselves. We go lower and lower and lower. So God is wanting to develop this culture of honor in this church But let me say, it first of all starts off in the home, with your family. God even put it in the Ten Commandments on children, obey your parents, honor your parents. And he gives a promise with that honor. God is calling us as a family to honor. If we don't honor, 
in our homes, we can't honor here. You're going to be sitting next to each other as husband and wife, angry at one another because they're not honoring me. But you might honor me when you come into this building, but God's calling you to honor each other 24-7 behind closed doors. Even when your spouse does something wrong, you don't go behind their back and do that. When we honor in the home, it then filters into the church, and then the church is able, able to change the culture. Some of you are laughing, but you know you've done that. <laughs> when we honor, something happens in the spiritual realm. Because God honors And if we want to see God do miraculous things in this church, then we have to be a culture of honor in our home and in our church. So honor is a two-way street. It's not looking to the other person to honor you. Honor is, I honor you unconditionally because that's who I am and that's what God's called me to do. And then God honors that. That's the two-way road. He always honors when we honor others. When we surrender our rights and honor others, we can expect to be honored by God and people in return. See, humility precedes honor. Always. Think of this. Jacob. Was Jacob honored by his father-in-law? No, he wasn't. Remember, Jacob went to the father-in-law, and he says, I want to marry your daughter, Rachel. He says, you can have her. You got to work seven years for her, though. Well, Jacob honored him. He worked seven years. But guess what? He had to marry Leah, the not-so-attractive one, first, the sister, because that was the culture. And then... He had to work another seven years to get Rachel. So after 14 years, he finally was able to get Rachel. Even though his father-in-law didn't honor him, he honored his father-in-law, and he honored the culture. See, God is calling us up when people don't do us right to still live a life of honor. When you live that life of honor, what happens? God exalts you. Think of this. Listen to what God is called in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do you see in that humility, in that obedience, in that character that he had being other-minded, God exalted him, and throughout all the ages, God of Jacob. Isn't that beautiful? So when people don't honor you, it doesn't matter. You still honor them. Philippians 2 says, Then... Do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be, be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. In this relationship, if you're dating, if you're courting, you're engaged, you, you're married, you're always wanting to put the other before yourself. If you're going into this relationship and it's about what I can get out of it, you're done. God is calling you to this place of honoring them whether or not you get honor back. Now the world is going to say, no, get out of it. 
run. I'm going to tell you, in the church, not so. God hates divorce. So we're laying our lives down for one another. We're honoring one another. There's no room for selfishness. You honor your partner above yourself. Let me give you some words for honor in marriage, in relationships. Admiration. Do you know, ladies, it is so easy to take care of a man. I was just watching a lady that just wrote a book, and she said, basically, it's two things with men. They want respect, admiration, and physical intimacy. We're not too hard, are we? It's pretty easy. The woman that wrote the book, I didn't say this now, women. She said, women, more complex. I'm still trying to figure out life. We glow. It's not about anything but honor. Honor, honor. So this word admiration, value, prize, cherish. The word cherish is like a hen sitting upon the egg, waiting for it to hatch. The cherishing of one another, holding dear one another, treasuring one another, relish, take pleasure in. That's honor in a relationship. That's what's supposed to be coming out of every one of us in a relationship. Not looking for it, but looking to give it. And the opposite of all this is neglect. If we are neglecting these things, we are not honoring our spouse. So God is calling us to this. Now, this scripture is not used in marriage, but I want to use it in this context of marriage. How many of you want to have heaven on earth in your marriage? I'm not going to ask how many are experiencing heaven on earth right now. But in Matthew 13... Verse 44 through 46. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. I believe that is a beautiful picture. It's really the picture of Christ and his bride. Well, that's really a picture of what marriage is. It's like you find this beautiful pearl in your spouse, and it's, you hide it in this field, and you go sell everything to purchase this prize, this treasure this pearl. It's about total abandonment of self. So right now, our focus really should not be on anyone other than me. Lord, am I living that life of total abandonment? But some of you right now are saying, what about me? What about me? It's not right. For 30 years, I've given honor to my spouse, and they've never honored me. That's the cross. The Christian life is not about me, myself, or I. It's about no longer I, but Christ. And it's exactly the picture that Jesus gave for his bride. So the key is, every one of us, to raise the white flag early. I surrender. Because if you don't raise that white flag, the battle will rage for years. You're bringing two people together that came from different families, that have different ideas, that
that have different philosophies, that raise children differently, and all these different views, you're bringing these two together, and it's not about me getting my right and demanding my way to have it my way in the marriage. It is so quiet in here. Roger, where did this originate from? I believe it originates from God. It began in the Trinity before the foundation of the world was even laid. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit all honored each other. Amen? It's a beautiful picture, the Trinity. I want to share some scriptures about how they honor each other. In John 13, verses 31 through 32, it says, As soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, The time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, his honor. And God will be honored because of him, glorified. And since God receives glory, honor because of the Son, he will give his own honor, his to the son and he will do so at once do you see how even in the trinity they're honoring one another jesus is living in total obedience to his father he's living in humility and this humility that's coming out of him for reverence to his god to his father god is saying i'm going to give you the honor that i have i'm going to give it back to you They're the perfect picture of marriage. John 17, 1 and 4, it says, After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify, honor your son so he can give honor back to you. Verse 4, I brought honor to you on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. See, Jesus was always completing the work of the Father. So when I get into this relationship with Gloria, it's always, what can I do to elevate her? What can I do to reverence her and honor her? I live in humility to serve her, to obey God, to live in character, to be other-minded, not thinking what she can do for me, but what I can do with her. And what happens is God says, Roger, You are honorable, and I'm honoring you because that's all that matters is with God. He wants to be honored. So we go to Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit honors Trinity. In John 16, verses 13 and 14, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, In some versions, it says he will not draw attention to himself. You ever been around couples and either one of them are all about drawing attention to themselves? Holy Spirit says, no. The attention, I don't want it on me. I want it on Jesus. And he goes on, he says, but I will tell you what he has heard he will tell you about the future he will bring me glory see that jesus is saying holy spirit will bring me honor by telling you whatever he receives from me so it starts it originates in the trinity but then god creates man and woman in his image and we have the same nature of god so we can't say But Roger, I'm human. Oh, no. The Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature in Christ. So the same honor that exists in the Trinity now exists in our nature. Amen? Ephesians 5 says, And further you will submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Now, we hear for so long, Women, submit to your husbands, amen? But right here it says, submit to one another. 
Well, I'm a man. I don't submit to any woman. Well, God bless you. You're not obeying God's word. It says here, submit to one another. Out of honor for Christ. Do you know, if I don't listen to Gloria sometimes, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. She's discerning. She can tell me things that will hurt me if I follow through with my own will. She'll share things, and I have to listen. And I have to submit to those things at times. Why? Because it's honoring each other. I'm not calling men to be handpicked. I'm calling you to obey God's word and honor your spouse, your wife. Your wives will submit to your husbands as you do unto the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the body, the church, and gave his life to be her Savior. Now this might seem old-fashioned to many people, but I believe with all my heart, and I will die with this conviction, that God has placed an umbrella of protection of authority in our life. He is the ultimate authority, God is. God places parents in our life for protection. We are to submit and honor our parents. That's an umbrella of protection. But then when you get married, women, when you step out of your parents' authority, you're stepping now under the authority of your husband. I don't believe that's changed in 2,000 years. I believe it's the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why does he put your husbands as an authority? It's a protection over you. But what about if my husband is not protecting me? He's abusing me, verbally abusing me. You know what I do? I tell you, bypass that authority and go directly to the next authority, God. God, will you get my husband? Would you put a spanking on him that'll wake him up? Do you not think that God will not take care of you? you you're not that nagging wife. You are going to God in prayer. The Bible says that meek and humble spirit that's praying before the Lord, and God sees that. He will not abandon you. He will watch over you. I'm old-fashioned in that way, folks, but I believe it's truth. And so he has his spouse, and then he places government officials. He places presidents, governors, mayors, police officers in our life for protection. We'll talk about that next week. But this is what God wants to do. The husband is the head of the wife. Now I'm going to ask husbands a question. Husbands, do you love your wife? as much as you love yourself. I'll ask her after the service, Dan. Just kidding. Do you love her more than your own desires? Ladies, do you love your husband as much as you love yourself? And your children. Ephesians 5 says, husbands, go all out in your love for your wife. Exactly as Christ did for the church. You will not have a problem, men, with honor if you go all out like Christ did for the church. If you do, I'll be surprised. A love marked by giving and not getting. I'm going to give and give and give and look for nothing in return. That's what he's calling us all into in relationships. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her. That's honor. 
dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiest, holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love, honor their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. I'm going to uh, ask Lori a question. Uh, the other day we were riding down the road, and we had Blair Elizabeth in the car, and uh, she just came out of the blue and said, I said this when we started dating. Do you remember? Oh, we were married. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, she said I hurt her feelings about it. So. You, uh, Roger said to me one day that um, he will never be able to meet my needs and um, that I had to go to God to meet my needs. And um, I started crying. And he really hurt my feelings because I thought that he was supposed to meet my needs. And then he just fell asleep, and I just lay there crying. <laughs> it's true. Guilty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have your needs been met over the past 35 years? Exceedingly, abundantly, beyond I could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm thrilled that she has stayed with me. But it's about honor. I know without a doubt I cannot meet her needs. God created Gloria that he is the only one that can meet those needs. And the same with me. And it's best to learn now versus later. Because if you get into that relationship, looking to each other to meet those needs it's yeah it's trouble it's a battle thank you babe so what is this key to honor it's losing your life even Jesus talked about how people love. Listen to this in Matthew 5, 46. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. So, I'm seeing it left and right in the church. The world has infiltrated the church and it's full of, well, we're separating or we're divorcing because they don't honor me or they don't love me. And we're just like the world. And God's calling us higher. We're not to be of this world. We're in the world, well, not of the world. So how do we deal with this? It's brutal. It's the cross. Matthew 16, 25. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. It is about denying yourself is when you find your true self. True joy and peace is not looking to our spouse to honor us, but for us to honor them unconditionally. Why? Because honor comes from God alone. I really believe today the Lord's moving in some relationships. And it really grieves me that we will buy a car and we will change the oil in it every three to 5,000 miles. But we will not go to meet with others to pray for us and share our struggles and marriages every few thousand miles. We're embarrassed. Can I tell you something? Every one of us go through struggles. Every one of us. The pastor and his wife, we've gone through struggles. We've wanted to kill each other at times. But it brings us back to the cross. To die to self. 
that Christ in us will live to honor others over ourselves. Romans 15 says, this is the key. We should please others. If we do what helps them, we will build them up in the Lord. For Christ did not please himself. Instead, as the scripture says, the insults which are hurled at you have fallen on me. Roman, Ephesians 5, 25 again. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. This is it. He's calling us all to humble ourselves. So if you come to me and say, say to me, Roger, my husband is this. Or husbands, you come to me and say, my wife is this. Just know, I will point you to the cross. People do not like that kind of marriage counseling or family counseling. Because here's your will. You're coming to counseling because you want someone to agree with you. And here's God's will. Someone's got to die. We all have to die. So G Jesus gave up his life for her in humility. He willingly went to the cross, total obedience. He paid the penalty for his bride's sins, removing her guilt and shame. He gave up his glory and power to become a servant. That is solid character. He didn't die for his own interests, but for his bride, us, other-minded. He looked to meet her needs and interests instead of his own. Respect and reverence. Would you bow your head? I'm going to ask you some questions. Can a marriage make it with only one honoring? Yes, I've seen many of them make it. But what would happen if both of you decide to honor the other person. You're not going to just have a good marriage. You're going to have a great marriage. It takes two people giving 100%. That's the spirit-filled life. Both parties submitting to the Holy Spirit. And here's the mark of a spirit-filled life. It's not speaking in tongues, healing the sick. Here's a beautiful mark of a spirit-filled life. The loss of pride and self-will that leads a person to humbly serve others. We must lose ourselves, guys. Marriage is a call to die. Marriage is about God conforming us into the very image of Jesus. It's stripping, stripping. And you might be thinking, man, I don't know if I can go through this. What wound is holding you back? Is there a wound that Jesus needs to heal? We're going to watch a video in a second after I pray. But there's two people in my life that stand out that have lived a life of honor. My mom is the first one. I've known her for 57 years. And I watched her with my dad. My dad didn't always treat her with honor. But I honor my father. But my mom, 24-7, honored my dad in difficult times, and I saw it. It was a beautiful example to me of surrender and the cross. But another one that stands out is Bia, my mother-in-law. I've known my mother-in-law now for 35 years, and I've watched her life. It has been one of pure to her husband, to her children. 
my question to you is, do you want to finish this life as a vessel for honor or dishonor? He's calling us higher in our families. Father, there's a holy hush in this place. The reason why is I know you're bringing us to the end of ourselves even more so. And that's what we want to do. As John the Baptist prayed, we want to decrease that you might increase. So right now we choose by faith to deny ourselves no matter how our mate treats us. We want to honor them. And we want to finish as vessels of honor. And we want to say and hear from you, well done, thou good and faithful servants. You are honorable from God our Father. So, Lord, as the white flags are going up now, surrender. I'm asking that you will transform relationships into the very relationship of Jesus and his bride. Not how the bride treats the groom, but how the groom treats the bride. That's who we are, and that's what we want to be that's what we want to do. We trust you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you watch this video with me? Damn, you sweetheart. Uh -huh. I always was your sweetheart. Yep. I was your best lover. I don't know how many others you had, but I was the best. Oh, I know. <laughs> She loves you, Daddy. I love you too, Ma. <laughs> Behave yourself, she said. I'm always good. Okay. She said she loves you, Grandpa. I love you. Okay. Okay. This is your song. Behave yourself, she says. Okay. Are you all right now? So, a million for more time.
That's honor. That's honor. If you've been married, uh, maybe your spouse has gone home to be with the Lord, but if you've been married over 25 years, would you stand up? Let's give them a hand. Young people, it's a challenge. You'll want to give up, but hang in there. It is well worth it. And you will see the beauty that unfolds when you hang in there. It's honorable. It's love. It's beautiful. Would you stand and join hands? So, Father, we thank you for marriage, family, all originated from the Trinity. A beautiful, honorable relationship that started off with you. And then you created Adam and Eve into that same relationship of honor. And right now, in Jesus' name, we are calling forth every relationship in this church to be healthy, to be whole, to be prosperous, prosperous and healed. In Jesus' name, rise up relationships. And we come against the thief who is trying to kill, steal, and destroy these families, these marriages. In Jesus' name, we renounce his lies and we embrace truth. And we're declaring the truth to set free families and relationships to be that of honor, So, Lord, we acknowledge our death, burial, and resurrection with Christ. It's no longer I. It's Christ. And Christ will honor our mate. Jesus, would you endure to the end? Would you be our perseverance that we would all die in honor? In Jesus' holy name.